Are you looking to host something in Zoom meeting and you want to use the waiting room, but then you'd love to turn off the waiting room at some point? Well, I'm gonna talk through why you'd want to have that feature, how you can do it, and explain some of the limitations to doing this so that you're better informed on how you can use the waiting room for your next Zoom meeting. Before we jump into it, I'm Logan Clements. I'm a freelance event producer based in Seattle, Washington, but I execute events here and all over the world. I do wanna remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. I'm also the co-host of the Better Events podcast with fellow event pro Mary Davidson. We dive even more into some of these topics about event production, event planning, We've got episodes about being a stage manager, about being a day of event coordinator, what our post-event process looks like. We have voice notes that we share with you from being on site at events and much, much more. So listen wherever you listen to podcasts. We are also hosting the 2024 Better Events Conference. We are in person December 18th and then 100% virtual on December 19th. This is an opportunity to bring together the event community, learn from each other. You're gonna make real connections. Link is down below for you to buy your tickets if it's you're watching this before December 19th. All right, so let's dive into it. I'm a big fan of understanding the why before I show you the how. And so why would you wanna be able to have waiting room enabled, but then disable it maybe later during your meeting. Well, this is a feature and the idea for this video came because I wanted to do that at one of my virtual meetups that I host. And so the why is I want to have a meeting, a waiting room so that I can start my meeting and know that people haven't been let in yet. I want them to be waiting until I'm ready. Then I also, as people are coming in, I do kind of want to filter out um, just if there's anybody that hadn't registered for the event or also I have been really, this is like a very open discussion group and more people are using AI tools for note taking and so they want to record the meeting so your AI can then, you know, give you a summary and I haven't been letting those folks into the meeting just like that AI tool is. The person can come in, but I don't want that AI tool in the meeting just because, again, it's more meant to be an open discussion. So those are the reasons why I want the waiting room. And refresher for if you need a waiting room, you have to have a passcode set up on your Zoom meeting. So it can't just be the Zoom link. It has to be Zoom link plus a passcode, um, which if you're someone who's used Zoom before, you know if you set up the passcode in your Zoom settings, send someone the link, it actually bakes that passcode in there. I honestly have only really had it come up when people are trying to join from a tablet or from their phone where it'll say, okay, join the meeting, up, what's the passcode? So you have to have a passcode, it's a security feature, Zoom requires it, you have to have that on to be able to then disable the waiting room. And so you have it enabled, you have it turned on, folks are coming in, and then you can in Zoom, and I'm gonna show you this, you then turn it off. And so that then enables anyone who maybe joins your meeting late. And that was the reasoning for me was I was getting distracted, just kind of keeping an eye on the waiting room. I also had some folks who like would join from their phones, get home and want to join from their laptop and be like, oh, I was in the waiting room for 20 minutes. So I wanted to make it easier on myself where I'm moderating the first like five minutes, 10 minutes of folks coming in and then I disable the waiting room from there. So that's my why behind how you want to do this and so let me take you into first you need to start in your back end of zoom so let's start from there all right so here we are on zoom.com and you need to log into your account you'll see your little icon up here so you're going to want to scroll down here to settings and you click settings then you're going to come here and you're in your meeting you can either then scroll down um, or i just am bored so i will just type in waiting room so you can see here the magical button is that it needs to be blue so that means yes it is enabled and then you're going to go down and you can say everyone goes to the waiting room it does let you customize options now where you if you like work for a company you can make it that maybe if they're from your company they don't have to go to the waiting room Um, You can also, I like this, this is a brand new feature here. Um, Again, you can see here with that little V, you have to be updated, but you can then sort it alphabetically, which that's helpful if you're trying to check people in via the waiting room. Um, And then you can also have some bypass options and things like this. Um, So what I have done is I have kept it to everyone. They just join an order. I'm not kind of utilizing some of those features just yet. And then um, I don't have it enabled where folks can join before the host. I don't want that. And so that's where you have the waiting room. You can see it lives in the security section. So let's actually just look at security first. So security, you want to make sure if your waiting room's enabled, um, 
you need to then also have this passcode. So if you see my passcode is disabled, if it's blue, if it's gray, you will see you can still utilize the waiting room feature, but what you will find is you cannot turn it off. And so I'm just gonna show you, we have our waiting rooms enabled, we have our meeting passcode is also enabled. All right, so now I'm gonna jump into my Zoom app to start a Zoom meeting. So here's a common mistake that I see some people make. You do a new meeting, you just start it up, you're gonna go to your participants, and you're gonna go to more, and then you're gonna see it's enabled, enable waiting room, but it's grayed out, meaning I can't change it in this meeting. Why? Well, if you go up to your lovely um, little icon up here, your little shield, a pop down, you'll see it says meeting ID, and then there's no password on this account. So it will not, and that's because it's my personal meeting room and I've just been hesitant to you know, make any changes or anything to that. So now let's start a new one and a new Zoom meeting. You can see here in this meeting, you wanna make sure your passcode is checked, waiting room is checked, let's hit save. So now let's start this meeting and I'm in my lovely Zoom meeting. And then I'm gonna to go to participants. You are gonna see the more and now look at that, it is optional. I can turn it on, I can turn it off. And the key here is you have to have that passcode. So let's go back and look at this section. Now you will see that there is the ability, there is a section that says passcode. So that's how I'm able to turn the waiting room on and off in Zoom meeting. All right, before I wrap, the big limitation here, if you didn't get that from me showing you, is you have to have a passcode enabled. And often I see this where it just is someone forgets, like they start their personal, they do the meeting in their personal room, they don't have a passcode set for it, and so they just forget. And that is something that is really hard to change during the meeting. I think you actually have to end the meeting, go back and change your settings. I don't believe as of right now you can add the passcode to an active meeting. So that is something that has just been a hurdle in the past um, where I've enabled a waiting room, they didn't want to put a passcode on it, and there's no way for me to turn that waiting room off. And so then it just takes someone's time to keep, eat, like, keep an eye on the waiting room. Um, but I really highly recommend you thinking about utilizing this feature, making sure you have a passcode on your Zoom meeting, especially if you are self-producing your session, meaning like you are the speaker, you're hosting, you know, a talk here in Zoom meeting or some kind of panel or something, and you just don't want to be distracted by having to let people in, then I would consider turning off the meeting. That's how I've applied it to my life. I've just found I want that control at the start of the meeting. But once we get rolling, there's usually not that initial push of attendees. It's just the straggler one or two. And I really don't want to get distracted from my content just to let that one or two people into the meeting. Hopefully you learned something new about Zoom. I appreciate you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.